little quick little video. This is a Cyanide 3, which I've uh, had sitting around for a little while. So actually, it's actually a piece of my test gear, but I don't really use it much. I tend to use it as a centroscope, but um, it's got Cyanide on it, which is what I'm actually looking for at the moment, is using that. This one's already modified by someone long before I got it. The uh, original internal AC converter has been disabled, the wire's been clipped off there, and it's got 12 volt supply only. Um, what I've got on here, this has got the original lead here, I believe it's the original lead anyway. It's got clip lead scenes, clip onto the speaker. Otherwise, I think you're testing. Uh, I'm actually looking at converting that to be a plug, so I'm plugging into the back of the radio. But, um, what's happening is, because this has been modified, it's now running off 12 volts. The 12 volt is going to the negative of the chassis, right? So it's actually got like the, the zero volt rails of the whole unit. And this clip lead here, which runs through the cable, excuse the bloody messy, I'm just pairing with other stuff. Um, that is also going to the same place, so that meant that clip lead was negative relative to DC. Um, and if you're connected that to a piece of equipment like this, um, it's actually putting DC across the speaker. So I was actually just testing for that, and I actually just, I was a little resistor here, which is in series with the speaker, and I could feel that, and that's starting to warm up. So I thought, right, okay, I need to do something about that because I suspected that that was going to be the case; it's going to be an issue before I put a plug onto it, so I plug it straight to radio and um, so what I found was I'm actually noticed down here where that clip lead comes in excuse the bad lighting there's two empty holes just there for a component on the negative side of that clip lead so it's actually a shielded lead as well, it actually has a shield too but, um, on this side here there's there was actually a little trace joining between these pads and the chassis ground um, I've cut that little trace and installed a capacitor in those two empty holes. Um, so now that is floating for DC. AC measurements are still fine, it's not actually affecting any of that, it's all working just perfectly. So um, yeah, it's 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 good now, but um, yeah, that solved that problem. So if you have one of these things and you have issues with you know, worrying about getting a ground through those leads, open it up, check for that part there, see if that capacitor is installed. I installed a uh, 104 um, polyester cap, so it's um, I think it's polyester. Anyway, I've had, I've had them sitting around for ages. They're sitting in the parts drawer, so I don't use them often. But Mark 104, so what's that? Point one UF or something. Um, so that's what I'm installing there, and the measurements are still fine. The AC measurements of volts, at least, are correct. I don't believe it's affected cyanide. Um, the positive rail. The positive input from that lead actually comes up through the through the switch and passes through that capacitor through the divider, which is the level control in the front here. Um, so the positive was already protected from DC, but the negative wasn't. So anyway, that's that sorted out. Nice little quick video for you in case you have one of these and worry about that issue.